hello, hello, it's Elizabeth Countess of Low Carb here. Happy Sunday, my loves. Happy, happy, happy Sunday. Today is our reschedule for Dr. Ken Facebook Live. I'm so excited to have Dr. Ken coming up, and he's going to answer all of your ketogenics questions coming up next. with Countess of Low Carb interjecting a quick editor's note. So we have broken this up into a two-part series just because it was so long and we had so many questions. So if you have other questions for upcoming videos, put them in the comments below. But this is part one of part two. Feel free to put your questions below um, and would love to answer them. If not this this Facebook Live, definitely would love to answer them. Usually we do them on, this on Fridays. We have an ongoing Friday reoccurring appointment together. So definitely would love to answer them in um not if we don't get to them today, definitely would love to answer them. So I have tons. I have so many good juicy questions that I cannot wait to dive in and talk with Dr. Ken because um, since we were supposed to do it on Friday, there have been more questions that came flooding in. So I'm so excited. So while we're doing this, get some water. I did not grab any water and now I'm kicking myself that I didn't get some water. Um, but get some water and share this with some friends. Hi Kim, hi sweetheart, so glad that you're here. Um, share this with friends, get people who you know to come like it, share it with your friends on Facebook. Definitely um, would love, love, love to share this with as many people as possible. So let me just get, this is like wacky. My son, um, we just got back from Williamsburg. We were on a trip. We decided to take a last minute trip to Colonial Williamsburg. And my son was running around with my tripod, which I now see is like completely out of whack. Like my whole system over here is like totally, he was definitely jacking with my camera. So we're going to be waiting for Dr. Ken. But my first couple of questions that I'm going to hit hard are um, really good. Like I'm really excited. Like I'm really on a personal no, super, super excited. This is the real deal. This is like the real deal. So my two-year-old sleeping upstairs, my husband's like, if you wake him, you are in so much trouble. And I was like, I know. So like, I'm trying to like contain my super, super excitement of how stoked I am to die with Dr. Ken. But like, I'm trying not to wake my kid up either. And um, literally today, driving back from Colonial Williamsburg to here, I cleaned up poop all the way up 95. So sorry to all the rest stop people. I was just like throwing out the poop from the dirty diapers, like all the way up 95. So <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, um, I've got to do a Facebook live, so I'm not going to be able to put him down tonight. So like my husband and I totally like bartered for um, me to come on, but I'm really, really excited. I mean, it's mom life. Y'all know, I mean, particularly with a two-year-old who's still in diapers, like hashtag mom life was like slapping the concealer on and like trying to like not like literally my makeup was down my face so I was like trying to come on so it'd be on time but I'm super super stoked to talk to you guys um make sure that you share this with people that you know make sure you like it and if you haven't checked out our my most recent YouTube series I'm doing a whole travel series on travel keto and I'm really really excited about talking about travel keto um because like for example this weekend we decided sporadically to go on a trip and so how do you do keto when you're travel and you're away from your like controlled environment so check out the Countess of Low Carb on YouTube I have um three it's a three-part series but I'm going to be adding at least two or three more into that um and would love to get your comments and feedback if you travel um what you think about that I'm going to be doing a business one I have an upcoming trip to LA as some of you guys know um, I'm a mom. My most important job is being a mom to a two-year-old and being a wife, but I do own multiple businesses and I am in pre-production for a TV show, um, writing a book, blah, blah, blah for my other business. So um, anyways, I know quite a bit about traveling because I do it for business and for personal. So Dr. Ken's watching. Let's pull Dr. Ken in. Dr. Ken, I'm so excited. Add. Add. Try not to scream, not to wake up my two-year-old. Hi, Dr. Ken. <laughs> and this probably will be a two-part series on YouTube like I did last time. I broke it into two-part series um, just because there's so many questions. Dr. Ken, how are you? Hey, lady. How's it going? I'm doing great. What's up? Good, 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 good. Happy Sunday. Thanks, yes. for, thanks for coming on on Sunday. No problem. We've had a fun, happy, productive Sunday. How's everyone out there doing? Are you doing this yes. kind of good or heart good? I feel like everyone's doing heart good. Heart I good. feel like it's been a good Listen, Sunday yeah. for everybody. Where are those hearts, people? Where are those hearts? So if you guys don't know Dr. Ken, Dr. Ken has a number one Amazon best-selling book. And Dr. Ken, last time I was calling it wrong. I was saying the name of your book wrong. You must correct me if I'm wrong. It will not hurt my feelings. If I, if I am wrong, you must tell me. I didn't but notice the name it. of his book. You didn't? Okay, good. Good. Because I did. I watched the replay and I was like, oh my God, I kept saying it wrong. 
<laughs> it's Lies My Doctor Told Me. That's it. <laughs> it's the name of Dr. Ken's number one best selling book. You've got to go get it. I put it in the description link um, below or above or wherever it's going. Hi, Nancy. Hi, sweetheart. Thank you for watching. I would actually like to pull you in later, maybe. <laughs> if we don't. But Dr. Ken it has a practice in Tennessee. He is one of the top doctors. He's also, he's my keto expert. He's my keto doctor expert to go to. And so he should be yours too. If you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, his Instagram channel, he is a social media influencer because he has hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube for all of his amazing free videos like he's a doctor and it's free um i would highly encourage you to go check it out and subscribe to his youtube channel because it's that good so can i dive in or am i missing anything before let's we dive do in? it let's do it oh nisha's watching hi nisha seriously nisha girlfriend like if we had met in real life like not over social media i feel like we would be very very good friends she's <laughs> the coolest chick you're a very blessed man she's very very yes cool. yes she is <laughs> county says hi <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's dive in. So here's my questions because I have about a million of them. Is that okay if I just rapid fire? Do it. Okay. Let's do it. How how to stay in keto when you can't exercise, you can't do too much until this person's <clears> healed <throat> from surgery, um, and they have four more weeks to go until they're fully healed from surgery. They can't really. How does how can they stay in keto when they're really not able to do super much? They're mm, kind of laid up. That's a great question, <clears throat> and that'll help me bring up one of my favorite points about losing weight. Uh, mm -hmm. is there a single video on my YouTube channel about exercise? No, not a single one. Have I ever no. mentioned exercise on one of our go lives? No, no, I haven't. Right. Exercise is no. great for the human body in hundreds and hundreds of ways. It helps prevent Alzheimer's dementia. It keeps your muscles strong. It, it helps a little with insulin resistance, but it has nothing to do with long-term weight loss. Exercise is great for you, but make sure and understand me. I'm not saying anything negative about exercise. It's great for the human body, but it is a terrible way to lose weight if that's what your goal is. And so if you're, if they're doing keto and trying to lose weight, exercise is entirely unnecessary. I've had paraplegics in wheelchairs who didn't exercise at all lose 20, 30 pounds with the ketogenic diet. That's the whole beauty of, of ketosis is you can achieve it by the foods you eat and by the mm -hmm. foods you don't eat, right? And so exercise is great for you. I encourage it. Nisha and I went for a walk today, but you don't have to exercise to lose weight. It is unnecessary. Wow. That's so encouraging. So for the person who I know, I know who wrote this question, I, this is so encouraging. Dr. Tan is saying, you can do this. Yeah. He's encouraging yeah. you. Absolutely. Just follow the keto food yeah. plan. Just follow yeah. it. Yeah. You'll be fine. You'll be exactly fine. Exactly right. Um, so how does, how does keto exactly work when, it, so some of these questions I have are going back to basics and then some of them are going to be more in depth, but how right. does keto exactly work when you aren't counting macros, you're eating more calories. I caught this question a bunch of you're eating more calories. How is that making you lose mm -hmm. weight? Um, and then there's more parts to this question, but I'll let you answer that first. Okay. Part. So that brings up another great point about the ketogenic diet or any diet is that calories don't matter. Calories do not matter at all. I never, ever count calories, and I personally don't count macros, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. But calories have nothing to do with human weight loss because we don't burn our food. We're, we don't have little furnaces in our tummy that burn up the food, and that's what calories are, are talking about is heat energy, right? And so the way they figure out how many calories a Baconator sandwich has is they put it in this bomb calorimeter which is a furnace that is surrounded by water, okay? And then they burn the Baconator up, and they see how many degrees it increases the, the temperature of the water. And the water has to be at sea level, and it has to be pure water. There's all these things that, that goes into the actual definition of a calorie. Our body doesn't burn food at all. It has nothing to do with that. We biochemically digest our food, and different macros go down different pathways, Right. And so 100 calories of bacon and 100 calories of lettuce and 100 calories of Twinkie are meaningless. That doesn't mean anything to your body. Your body doesn't even know what a calorie is. The bacon is biochemically digested a completely different pathway than the Twinkie or the, or the lettuce. They're, com they're not even it doesn't even go down the same biochemical pathway. And so when I was learning about biochemistry and human digestion and physiology and biochemistry, 
there were these huge diagrams, these huge circles and these rectangles and all these cycles that all the nutrients went through. And not a single time did the word calorie appear on any of those charts. Okay. Your body doesn't know what a calorie is. Your body doesn't count calories. So neither should you. Now that's, that's a big key theory, theoretical point to kind of get under your belt. And for a lot of people, I know that you're sitting there going, what? How can calories not count? If you eat more calories than you burn, you, you gain weight. No, that's absolutely not true. The, uh, a huge study called the Women's Health Initiative study actually had a huge arm, and it was, it was tens of thousands of participants in the study over years, and it was, all, it was, it was nurses, right? And so they had a, an arm within the study of nurses who calorie restricted. They ate 300 calories less than their, their basal metabolic rate, and they did that for years. Mm-hmm. Now, we all know that a, cal- a, a pound is 3,500 calories, right? And so if you, mm-hmm. if you calorie restrict and save 3,500 calories, you should lose a pound, right? Well, these women calorie restricted 300 calories a day for seven or eight years. And so they should have all lost, what, 225 pounds. Mm-hmm. They lo- on average, they lost half a kilogram more than the, the ladies who were able to just eat the basal meta- metabolic rate. The calories didn't do, the calorie restriction didn't do anything. It did nothing. And that's not just 10 women over a month. That's thousands of women over seven years time. So this has been proven beyond doubt. <clears throat> and that's not the only study. That's just the one that I like to talk about because these were nurses. They're not, they're not trying to trick people. They're just trying to, because nurses want there to be good medical information out there. Right. So they, they weren't being dishonest about this. They were trying to help the study glean as much useful information as possible. So I believe that these nurses in this study were being honest. And so anytime you do any kind of study about food and calories, you have people have to self-report. And a lot of times that's where your error comes in. But I think these nurses were being very honest about what they ate and didn't eat. And so the calories, you can forget the calories. The calories don't matter. You can eat more calories than your basal metabolic index and still lose weight. It's, it happens every day on the ketogenic diet. Uh, so if your macros are right, which in, in my mm-hmm. book, what we do here is I eat a very high fat, very low carb, and moderate protein. That's, that's what I go by. Yeah. And so I, we, we track cal- uh, macros for a minute. We did the, the urine ketone sticks for a minute. Just enough to kind of figure figure out like okay this is helpful this is not helpful, but I'm yeah. very ADD I don't I and mean, I'm very busy I don't have time to be counting macros and yeah. I, that's that ain't my thing anyway I don't like counting and recording and all that stuff right. it's just not it's right. not for me, and so right. there are multiple patients that I've personally had in the clinic who I've counseled on how to do this diet who have lost a lot of weight a lot of weight like 40 50 60 pounds mm-hmm. and didn't count mm-hmm. a single macro and I know that they were eating more calories than their basal metabolic rate because of they were eating so much fat. They had to be, right? Like some of them are probably eating twice of the amount of calories that they burned a day, but wow. still were losing weight. And that's further evidence that calories are meaningless. They don't mean anything. Yeah. And there are still a lot of gurus on Facebook and on, on Instagram who will say, oh, it's, it's just merely, it's, it's CICO, just burn more than you eat. That's how simple it is. And that's completely false information. It's not helpful. Mm-hmm. It basically, it keeps people doing busy work, thinking, yes. thinking that they're really doing yes. something productive. And really, you're doing busy work that isn't helping you one bit to reach your goal, mm-hmm. which is to lose weight, meaningful weight, permanent weight. Calorie restriction right. does not give you that ever. Right, right. So, the, and I got this question a bunch too. Of if you're obese, and I have lost 50 pounds, I have another 50 pounds to go. So lots of people that I'm working with are very much in a similar boat that I am. That it seems counterintuitive if you're fat to eat more fat, mm-hmm. but it doesn't work that way. You well, have to eat the fat. You have and, to eat the high fat. Yep, and that's another key concept to the ketogenic diet. Is you need some people need to go look in the bathroom mirror and repeat 10 times. Eating fat doesn't make me fat. Eating fat doesn't make me fat because it's yes. not the fat. Yes. It is not the fat. It is right. the sugars, the starches, the simple carbs. That's what makes you fat. And uh, this this has been known forever. Back before the before the fifties and sixties, when this all changed, cookbooks back in the twenties and etiquette books for girls back in the teens and twenties and thirties 
they would say, if you want to lose weight, cut back on the sweets and starches. I mean, they knew it was just, that's just what you did. Yes. Right. And it was just that common sense that had been passed down to gener generation to generation only when the federal government and uh, media got involved and then big food and then big pharma. And they all got together were magically fats bad for you and, and fat makes you yes. fats, right? That's where that came from. Before the 1950s, no one had ever heard of such a concept. And if you had mm -hmm. said that back in the 1940s or 30s, they would have laughed at you because you were stupid. They were like, dude, everybody knows it's sugars and starches. That's, that's, we know mm -hmm. that. That's not even up for debate. Yeah. Why would you even say fat makes you fat? You're dumb. That's what would have happened 100 years ago. People knew. That that's what you do. You cut back on sweets mm -hmm. and starches and breads. So you stop eating those things. And you lose weight. So, yeah, fat does not make you fat. There's no research that shows that it does. There's no research that shows that fat is bad for the human organism in any way. Boom, boom, boom. If you're just joining us, I've got with me Dr. Ken D. Berry. He is my keto expert. He is the leading I um, the Countess of Low Carb says, the leading keto doctor. You need to check out his Amazon number one best-selling times book, his YouTube channel, which is huge, 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 huge. It's blowing up every day. It's getting bigger and bigger. Go check out his YouTube videos, his Facebook, Instagram, all that lovely stuff. He has his own practice in Tennessee, and he's moving mountains, people, with this ketogenics diet, and I am privileged to be able to uh, talk with him on a weekly basis. We have a Friday weekly show together, so yeah. uh, I'm kind excited of our to thing. have him today. It is. It's very exciting. I'm very excited about it. Um, so I have this question I've gotten a whole bunch, um, and it's about infertility and getting pregnant on keto. Now, I'm in a bunch of these keto groups, and every daggone second I look over and someone's got a pregnancy stick on there. I got pregnant, which is so exciting. Like, I'm so mm -hmm. excited for them, yep. um, for people who have, like, PCOS and things like that. Mm -hmm. Why? Why yeah. does it see? Is, is, is this just it seeming like people are getting knocked up left and right? Or no, <laughs> there's something no. To it? if you want to get knocked up, eat the keto diet. OK, <laughs> trust me. Yeah. Um, the, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Dave Asprey. He's the guy that kind of founded the bulletproof movement. But he actually has a, an ice cream recipe. And, and I think it's called get some ice cream or something like that. And like it's so full. And his theory is that eating this much fat tells your body, tells the female body mm -hmm. that you are living in the best of times. This is the time to bear a, a child and, and raise offspring because you are living in times. Wow. Of, yeah. And so that makes perfect sense evolutionarily <sighs> and, and, and ancestrally. I don't know if that's true or not, but I really love the name Get Some Ice Cream. I think that's pretty awesome. And you guys can Google that. And it, I, I have not had it, but it sounds amazing. But yeah, I've had multiple, I've had more than one woman in wow. the clinic who had polycystic ovarian syndrome yeah. who had had trouble mm -hmm. for five, 10 years, could not have a baby. Mm -hmm. And when she got mm -hmm. really hardcore keto, she got knocked up. That's happened at least two times that I can think of and maybe more, but definitely I can remember two right off the top mm -hmm. of my head. And that's, that's pretty good odds, right? Yeah. Uh, the whole point, yeah. I think, I think the reason is, is maybe partly evolutionarily speaking, when you're eating that much fat, it tells your body, yeah, man, we, we're, we're making a kill every day. We've got meat. We've got, you know, You've got enough nutrition that you can support a pregnancy and support offspring. And so, yeah, it's fine to get knocked up, so I'm going to make it as easy as possible. But then secondly, I think a, a lot of women with polycystic ovarian syndrome are undiagnosed, right? Because not every mm -hmm. woman looks like the poster child for PCOS. Mm -hmm. Some women mm -hmm. don't look like that, but they still have it, right? And so I think that part of it is the, in, the inflammatory nature of the standard American and standard Canadian diet. And I think it keeps your reproductive organs inflamed. And then also you're not, you, you know, if you're eating a low fat diet, <laughs> then your body's like, whoa, man, times must suck. All we're eating is grain and grain is what you feed mm -hmm. people to keep, you know, to keep them from starving to death. So this is probably not a very good place to have a baby right now. But I think a lot of it has to do with the, the chronic inflammation that comes from the standard diet that most people eat. Wow. And, you know, a hundred years ago, PCOS wasn't a thing. There wasn't, there was no, there's no record of any woman having this kind of trouble. There were women back then who couldn't conceive, but they weren't also yeah. overweight and having hair loss here, but have a hair gain here. That just didn't mm -hmm. exist, right? Mm -hmm. And so it has to be some combination of inflammation caused by the standard diet plus hormone shifts, almost certainly, because weight gain is always about hormones, right? But also getting pregnant about hormones as well. And so the fact that most poly polycystic women are mm -hmm. overweight but also can't conceive, 
tells you that you can be overweight even though you're eating a very poor diet, but also the inflammation, I think, that goes along with polycystic ovarian gets so much better when you eat an uninflammatory diet like the ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. You just get knocked up. And so congratulations. Well, I'm going to cross my legs and the count's going to run away. Yeah. <laughs> Better watch yourself. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. My two-year-old's you'll be, you'll be making, enough. You'll be making an announcement before long if you don't watch yourself. No, 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 no. Kitchen's closed. Kitchen is closed. As I was driving up, I don't know if you heard my introduction, we were at Colonial Williamsburg and literally on 95 dropping off, cleaning dirty diapers all the way up and down 95. I, one yeah. is plenty. One Gotta is love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to bounce off that topic, but if anybody else has any sort of infertility questions or things like that, feel free to put them below. If you want it to be personalized, you can send me a Facebook message or uh, on YouTube, send me a message or email me. Um, feel free, because we can definitely dive more into this on our Friday reoccurring weekly episode, which I would love to have you join us for that. Um, and while we're taking this quick break, make sure you share this video. I'm feeling, and I don't know, Dr. Ken, are you feeling like people aren't really sharing this? I'm, I'm having the feels that people aren't sharing it. So well, we I was just wanna... about to say, this that okay. one segment that we just talked about, polycystic ovarian and the inflammation yeah. and the reproduction, you've got to, you guys got to know somebody yeah. who's having trouble yeah. conceiving. You've got to know a friend who has yes. PCOS. Why don't you share this right now? Just click the share yes. button and type in their name. That's all you got to do. And yes. you could literally change their life, right? They yeah. could soon themselves be yes. cleaning dirty diapers on I-95 as well, right? <laughs> you two could be like me. <laughs> yeah, you two could be like Countess and have poop on your fingers. See, I knew we were going to talk about poop. Dr. Ken, every, every time. You talk, and I, I've been watching because Dr. Ken is on lots of other people's um, – he's so influential about what he talks about. And he talks about poop on everybody's one. Yeah. Poop is important. I <laughs> really poop, do like poop. talking about bowel movements. Poop's a thing, man, okay? <laughs> not for the countess. Mm -mm. No, no, yeah. no, you are not. Nisha. You're Nisha. You're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -mm. I don't know what you're talking about. No, yeah. no, no, no. Um, okay, so – I really want to go back to this infertility thing because I think that there's so much, but I have so many other questions of other people who really want, were wanting some help yeah. and some, had some questions too. So we're going to come back to this. We're going to come loop back to this. Folks, don't worry. We're going to loop back to it. But hey, if you like this video, click like, click subscribe. We are going to make this a two-part series. So the second video will be coming up on a different episode and I'll put it in the description links below so you can see part two of it.